In this problem, we're asked, can cars stop on a dime? Calculate the acceleration of a 1400 kilogram car if it can stop from 35 kilometers per hour on a dime. The diameter is 1.7 centimeters. How many Gs is this? And what is the force felt by the 68 kilogram occupant of the car? So I always start these problem, problems by writing down the given. And so what are we given? We're told that the mass of the car is 1400 kilograms. And so the mass of the car is gonna be 1400 kg so you know kg is mass, so keep that in mind, and this is going to be of the car. And so we also know that it's going from 35 kilometers per hour, and then it's going to be stopping. So if you think about this like kinematics, uh, our initial velocity, v sub 0, is going to be 35 kilometers per hour. And so what we're going to want to do is later on change this to meters per second because uh, we want all of our units to align, but let's just keep writing the given. So we'll change this later, but... Uh, we're going to write uh, V, which is our final velocity, uh, in uh, meters per second. So since we're coming to a stop, it's just going to be zero meters per second. So we start at this, right? We travel, and then we're going to a stop. So zero meters per second. And then we also know uh, that delta X, which is our change in our position, is going to be equal to 1.7 centimeters, right? Because we're trying to stop in that time. So 1.7 centimeters. And so I'm going to convert this to meters just real quick. So for every 100 centimeters, there's one meter. So we just divide this by 100 to get it in meters. So if you divide that by 100, you'll get 0 0.017 meters. So that's that in meters. And then what we want to do is write down uh, the mass too. So we know the mass of the uh, person in this car for the final question is going to be 68 kg. So 68 kg. And then this is just going to be the person in the car. So person... And so now we've got basically everything laid out. All we have to do now is convert this to meters per second. And so if we convert this to meters per second, uh, 35 kilometers per hour, there's going to be 1,000 meters for every one kilometer. So that would get rid of uh, the kilometer. And then we know there's 3,600 seconds for every one hour. So that will cancel the hours. You just do 35 times 1,000 divided by 3,600. If you go ahead and do that, you're going to get what the initial velocity is in meters per second, which is going to be 9.72. So 9.72 meters per second. And so now we've got everything set up to where we can solve for acceleration, right? Because they're asking, calculate the acceleration. And so keep in mind for the second question, though, they're asking, or the third one, we're trying to find force. So the equation for force is mass times acceleration. So we need this acceleration in order to solve for the force. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and so since this is like kinematics, we're going to be using the equation uh, v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x. And the reason you are using this one is because we're solving for a, and we have every other variable given, so we can just go ahead and solve. So if we plug everything in, v is going to be 0. 0 squared is just 0. So 0 equals v sub 0 squared. And keep in mind, you got to use the meters per second one. So 9.72 squared plus 2 times a and a is what we're solving for so just leave it as the variable times delta x which is 0 0.017 so if we go ahead and solve for this uh, i'm going to move this to the other side so minus 9.72 squared is equal to 2 times 0 0.017 which just becomes 0 0.034 times a and so if you want to solve for a divide both sides by 0 0.034. So a is going to be equal to minus uh, 9.72 squared divided by 0 0.034. If you go ahead and do this, uh, keep in mind it's going to be negative, and that's pretty apparent, right? Because we're decelerating, we're stopping, and so it's going to be equal to negative two uh, two thousand seven hundred and seventy nine point nine two. So something about this, it's just about two thousand seven hundred seventy nine, and uh, the book, the way they want you to do it is round to 2,800. So just round to 2,800. And this is going to be in meters per second squared, right? Because that's how we measure acceleration when we're using meters in seconds. So acceleration is going to be minus 2,800 meters per second squared. And then the second question asks, uh, tells us to find how many Gs this is. And we, in order to find Gs, you just want to take your acceleration. I'm just going to take uh, 2,000. 779 
and just take the magnitude of it. So you just want the, you don't need the minus sign and then divide it by uh, 9.8 because for every 1G, there's 9.8 uh, meters per second, right? So just divide by 9.8 and this is going to give it to us in Gs. And so if you go ahead and do this, it's going to be two that or 283.57 and uh, you can round this to 284. Uh, G's is going to be G's, right? But the book tells you it's 280, so they just round a little bit weird. Uh, so it's just going to be 280 G's is what the book says. And then what we want to do is solve for force. So we have everything else. Force is going to be equal to uh, mass times acceleration. So our force is going to be equal to our mass, or the mass of the person in the car, right? So the mass of the person in the car is 68 times acceleration, which is going to be... Uh, 2,779. So just a rough estimate of what it is. So if you go ahead and do this, 68 times 2,779, uh, you're going to get 88 or 188,972 or about that. And you can round this to about 190,000, or at least that's how the book does it. And we can write this as in scientific notation, because if we move the decimal point five over, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we can just rewrite it as 1.9 times 10 to the fifth. And keep in mind, force is measured in newtons when you're using uh, kilograms and meters per second squared. So 1.9 times 10 to the fifth uh, power newtons. So this right here is going to be your answer to the third question. And hopefully you found this video useful.